Joining us now is Ojinika Oji Ukwe with stories <laughs> trending around the world. Hello, Janet. I missed that introduction. I had to laugh. Did you have to go that high? Is it because it's the new year? Well, happy new year to you, Dr. Abati. I haven't yeah. seen you. Thank Welcome you. back. Yes, I'm here. Implications induced introduction. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Uh, you, you have to do that. <laughs> I didn't know you were You do. You do. You do. My <laughs> brother. <laughs> you don't know. You don't know. You don't know. It's too very low. You know, I did. Nobody knows all. Ayo, ayo. My grandmother will say, "Lo jaffi kofi kobi lo finda." But Doctor Abati put me on the spot, and I told you, I'm always up to the task. Ah, okay. Thank you for the lo finda. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right. Well, good morning to you, viewers. Let's begin what's trending. Following up on reports linking the Minister of Interior, Olubumi Tunjiojo, with the 438 million naira contract awarded by the suspended Minister of Humanitarian Affairs and Poverty Elevation, Dr. Betaidu, to New Planet Project, a company the Interior Minister co founded and is currently a significant shareholder. The minister, who was cited at the presidential villa on Tuesday following the controversy, had claimed on live television that he is no longer involved in the running of the firm, having resigned as a director in 2019. The company in question was a company um, where I was a director, um, and about five years ago, I had resigned my directorship over five years ago. You own the company? Yes, I founded the company 15 years ago. Because the, the document online the, shows definitely that yeah, I yourself founded the, and your wife, I, isn't it? I founded the company okay. 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. But in 2019, when I got to the House of Representatives, when I won election, precisely, I did a change of... Um, this is it. You can have a look at it. Mm -hmm. This is, you can see there. This that is, is a CSC document. Certified true copy dated 2019. Almost five years ago, I had resigned as director of the company. And it is a company, is the company not entitled to bid for anything? I am not. I did it. I'm not Minister of Humanitarian. I'm Minister of Interior. This company can never work under Interior because that would be conflict of interest. That would be abuse of office. I never did that. So, and the company is a private entity. For me, I know there'll be a lot of pushbacks. And I'm saying this very clearly. I, this is not my first public office. I was a member of the House of Reps. And as a member of the House of Reps, before I had resigned as a director. Well, that was the interview that was trending on social media. I mean, there are so many things we got out of that information. The fact that he has owned, that he owns the company and he's a significant shareholder of that company by all its many laws. Well, the payments said to be made to the company founded by the minister include 279 million naira for the verification of beneficiaries on the National Social Register and an additional 159 million naira for the same purpose. The company, which was registered on March 3rd, 2009, still has the minister and his wife Abimbola listed on the CAC website as directors. This was the question that the, uh, you know, the anchor was asking. It shows that you are still directors. I mean, why did CAC not remove it since 2019, five years ago? Mm -hmm. In the meantime, Senate President Godswill Akbabio, back in 2020, named the Interior Minister, who was at the time a lawmaker and chairman of the House Committee for the NDDC, as one of the many National Assembly members who benefited from numerous NDDC contracts, Adesua Giwa Osage interviewed the minister for our Untold Story project as he tried to clarify the allegations. So as NDDC chairman, you have a, there's a very infamous situation that happens when the former minister, now the Senate president, um, Ababio, is speaking and you ask him to off his mic. I never did. It, it was not you. I didn't preside because I recused myself. You recused yourself. yourself so it was my deputy chairman. It was your there. deputy chairman. Uh, uh, I've got, who are even the greatest beneficiaries? It's two people now. Okay. Because if you look at your, your chairman. Your okay. chairman okay. Okay. okay, okay. I'll have a I'll have a that's okay. That's okay. That's okay. okay. The, chairman, the two chairmen can explain to you. That is why I was a member. I was a member of the NDDC committee. It's okay. Let me explain. No, it's okay. 
It's okay. Let me explain that. It's okay. Now. It's okay. You must not allow the two children to have the delivery. It's okay. Up your mind. It's okay. Yes, of course, I always believe I, I, I come to equity and I come with my hands. I have nothing to hide. Mm. So when they said they were in cover, I said, okay, I refused myself so that we be able to say anything. It's only a man that has something to hide that we insist he needs to decide why he don't care. I'm sure you all remember that off your mic uh, scandal. At the time, Olubimi Tunjiojo recused himself from that committee so that the investigation could go on. But Akpabio at that time also clarified that, oh, he made a mistake. But you could hear him there. He said that the chairman of that committee benefited from so many projects, which is the main issue. Let me take a tweet uh, on social media. This is from Chris, who wrote... Minister Olubumi Tunjiojo should be suspended as part of the ongoing investigation. One, Minister Olubumi Tunjiojo claims he is no longer a signatory to the account of New Planet Projects Limited, which got a whooping 338 million naira from Dr. Beta Edu is not acceptable. Two, his wife is a director of the company. Three, he also remains a key shareholder and person of significant influence. Four, it is alleged that Bumi Ojo colluded with Beta Edu to divert more than half a billion naira to himself, of which a significant amount relates to consultancy fees. Five, if his activities are properly investigated, you can be assured that he will also have awarded a contract to Beta Edu from his ministry in return, or Beta Edu will benefit indirectly from his millions. Young ministers cut deals and embarrass the youth. Six, we are not calling for his suspension for being a signatory to the company's account. Instead, we are calling for his resignation in case of a conflict of interest. Seven, it is also evident he has used this position to influence his company to get the contract. Eight, we are also calling for an investigation to unravel dealings in better edu schemes that have not yet been discovered and possible persecution. Nine, the only way to guarantee a fair investigation is for him to resign or be suspended. Ten, we acknowledge his current efforts in the government. However, corrupt individuals must be dealt with decisively. Making an effort to make our passport issue and system better is not an excuse for being corrupt. He is only doing his job. As a minister, I think Chris put all, you know, all the concerns of Nigerians in that one tweet. He made mention of so many things, which for me, the most important is that idea of conflict of interest. Because you could hear Bumi in that interview saying, ah, how can I be awarding contracts? That contract will not work under the Ministry of Interior uh, because it will be a conflict of interest. Mm -hmm. There is no difference at this point, uh, Dr. Abati, really quickly. Okay, there are rules mm. and regulations in the books. It is just that, unfortunately, in Nigeria, no, nobody respects those rules. They are often, uh, you know, observed in the breach to such an extent that it almost becomes standard practice for government officials to break the law. Now, in this particular case, I, earlier on, I talked about influence peddling, peddling of corrupt influence. Mm -hmm. If you are a minister and you are using your position to get contracts for a company for which you are associated, for with which you are associated. Yeah, he said he resigned in 2019, but his wife is there. He's still the biggest shareholder. If we probably check the other shareholders, the other shareholders will probably be his children, his cousins, uh, relatives of his wives. And then all of a sudden, uh, this uh, new planet company is uh, now truly in a new planet. <laughs> In charge of uh, major government uh, uh, con contracts. It's, so, not in a, it's been yeah. existing for years. They've yes, been doing yeah. a lot of government contracts. A new uh, planet, project, but now they are in a new planet. You know, the so, universe. <laughs> well, if you like, universe. So these are issues for the investigators uh, to look into. And it's not enough for him to say, uh, I'm just a shareholder, I'm not a director. No. The position that he occupies places him in a position where he can peddle influence. And if he says he's still a shareholder, what the uh, uh, Code of Conduct Law says, sections five and six, is that once you have a public uh, position, 
you know, you leave some of these other engagements. You are only allowed to be a farmer, you know. And uh, to the best of our knowledge, New Planet uh, Project uh, Limited is not a farming uh, outfit. You know, it's a, it's a, it's, it's a consultancy contract doing mm -hmm. uh, uh, project. So in that regard, there's an issue to be raised. The other kind of law that is not uh, looked at is Public Procurement Act. That is also routinely violated by government officials. Now, this Public Procurement Act stipulates how people can get contracts. How did they get the contract from the Ministry of uh, Humanitarian Affairs or other contracts? Was it through open, uh, open tender? Who were the other people? Uh, what was approved for him at, at, at the end of the day? We're talking about just one uh, project. Review, uh, contract, review of uh, uh, social register. Are there also other contracts involved? Then, of course, each of these ministries are supposed to have uh, internal auditing processes. That has also failed in many of these ministries. That's why a minister can just say, go and put this money in this person's uh, account. Abandonment of financial oh, regulations. Acceptable. Financial regulations 1709 in particular, you know, we seem to apply. So you have these breaches all over the system. But what is important, the challenge that many Nigerians, not just the gentleman whose uh, demands you listed, mm -hmm. the uh, Young Progressive Party yes. and also the People's Democratic Party, they are both saying also that, look, suspend the minister to allow for proper investigation so that you know, nobody uh, tampers with the process of uh, investigation. And you know, some people even go a step further and say, look, some of these ministers should begin to submit their letters of resignation. Mm -hmm. Because the Chinubu administration has an obligation to protect its integrity, yes. particularly as there are doubts about the president's personal commitment, despite the fact that his uh, campaign manifesto talked about fighting and tackling corruption. So this is a major test for his administration. Look at it. The uh, head of the social investment agency, uh, the uh, former minister of humanitarian mm -hmm. affairs, the minister of the interior, the former minister of humanitarian affairs. This is one of such moments yes. when a president has to be decisive. Right. And I had made the point that no president takes bullets for his employees. The, let the, it's the employees that should take bullets for the president. If it comes to that, let the people who take the bullets take the bullets so that President Tinubu can use this opportunity to make a statement. But the authorities must do so in a fair manner. Mm. Nobody should be uh, victimized for an offense that right. they have not committed. I mean, my biggest issue, Ayo, is that disregard for processes. We are seeing here 438 million naira used to review social register. Review. What was the pro I mean, how did they account for that? Let me just take this story before I come to you. In another development, the presidency has reacted to the word or retracted the word dismissal used to describe the removal of former FCCPC CEO Babatunde Irukera and BPEDG Alexander Oko, who on Tuesday were directed by the presidency to hand over to the next most senior officer at their agencies pending the appointment of new chief executive officers. Bayo Ononuga, in a statement on Tuesday, said the president's directive did not intend to use the word dismissal, but that the two men who have served the country were relieved of their duties as the president's scouts for their successors. In the meantime, according to the Federal Protection and Competition Act 2018, as it concerns setting up the FCCPC, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu may have erred in law in his decision to remove Irukera without resorting to the Senate. The section dealing with removal from office in the act states that once a good case is established against any commissioner or the head of the organization, the exercise of the powers of the president under the relevant section must be subject to the approval of the upper chamber. Disregard for processes. We need to keep calling out these issues. Absolutely. Now, we just saw in the news, I mean, I even heard word that Irukera did not find out about his dismissal. Um, that's another point that I have to make. His dismissal. He only heard it in the news. I mean, so we're seeing that he, it was supposed to follow due process. He didn't follow due process. And he didn't even get a phone call. I mean, this is what we're seeing here, Rufai. That's why President Tinubu must make atonement. 
I am happy they have started with mm -hmm. what Bayon Onunga said because that word was very harsh. It was yes. libelous, you know, like we've been able to establish. You can't just say dismiss, then what's the offense and mm -hmm. all of that. So, but the man has taken it in good faith. His work speaks yes, for him. Yes, we read his tweet yesterday. I got a chance to have personal interaction with him afterwards. He's taken it in good faith. His word speaks for him. It's the beginning of another thing. Erukera is a known lawyer in this country that constantly fights for consumer rights. And we all know if <laughs> that's, that's why when people see Walter well, Erukera taking on top multinationals, mm. and they look and say, who is this man? I say, you don't know his antecedents. He was the one that took a big pharmaceutical giant in this country. Yes. And he got results. And he had been the life and the soul of this competition department. And he has done a very good job, a very stellar job. So, like Dr. Bati was saying earlier on, they all serve at the pleasure of the president. If the president doesn't want to make it, it's the president's prerogative. But we need to do things right. Right. So, it's not the end of the world for him. It's just a beginning for another phase in his life. We just need to state that. And concerning the Hidato case, yes, President Tudobu has made a very good stance as regards suspending the minister. But like I said yesterday, President Tinubu's government stinks with this corruption. It's an indictment on him. In a fell swoop, two ministers, less than how many months? That's why I'm happy about his action is taken. Mm -hmm. It's a deep one. And when you know when people will talk about it even more, will be during the electoral season. And that's why Mr. Olubumi Ojo, and I also say this on live television. Yes. Whoever advised you to go on television to start a defense you had no solid position about just roasted you alive. Mm. And it has to be said, whoever advised you roasted you alive. Because, you see, you were making arguments that were not great enough, that were not substantiated. You could hear yourself. They were contradicting. They were contradicting. Yes. You're saying you're a shareholder in a company. And also, the case of that NDDC must be investigated. Mm -hmm. Because we just swept that case under the carpet. Today, Akbar is Senate President. And we can't just say a case like that are just off your mind. And guess what? I also talk about that NDDC. Yes. There's been a white paper release. The government should act on that white paper. They have finished the investigation. It was revealed many things happened in that white paper. They should be clear with people as regards that white paper because we can't just allow brazen corruption go. And for those that are saying, yeah, he's done good, he's done well, he's done death and all of that. I keep citing this. It's confirmed that somebody's an arm robber. He kills people for a living. But in the end, the person also does charity. When you see all the people's life that the person killed does not matter. Yeah, impossible. Because the person does charity. Absolutely impossible. No, he was I, just doing his job yes, as a minister. Like that Twitter user. And we appreciate right. him for doing his right. job. But, you know, the Yorubas have been being you, she, yeah, she. <laughs> if he doesn't do, another person will do. Let's so, have, let's, 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 let's give I on the yeah, floor. Conflict of interest. Honestly, <laughs> earlier I was saying that, right. and I still stand by the fact that yeah. I thought he'd done quite well yeah. as a minister. Yeah, and I feel quite it's disheartening to see that he's involved in such a scandal. Of course, investigations are still ongoing. Mm -hmm. And until we see the full report or outcome of that report, we cannot make conclusions on him. I do agree, though, that in terms of consequences, if he's found culpable, he ought to face the penalties for this so that we're setting a good example and precedent. I think just the, the, the sadness is that we don't often see ministers who work well. So, um, if I, let me use your example of the arm robber who <laughs> <laughs> maybe didn't kill people. Arm robber stealing from people. If it's that it's only the arm robber that is working, the people that are not arm robbers are not working, you will always say that, please come and do the work. But just still small, small. That's on a lighter yeah. note. Because at the end she of the day, we have to investigate everybody. Yes. You know, and see whose hands are really clean. Because yeah. the one that we are calling Star Boy right. does not, uh. looks like Star with a little. It you know, it can be true. It can be true. Wait. 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 Wait
I'm Robba <laughs> narrate you. We'll probably be Robin Hood. Yes, yeah. he was still in the <laughs> okay, okay, rich. Was, that's, that's a good Robin one. But let me just say something. But under the common law, he was a thief. <laughs> he was, but a, he was a hero <laughs> to the poor people. <laughs> so maybe the poor he's people. a hero. So no, this is no, very no, no, different no, no, because that 438 million oh, so naira could have been given he was, to the... That means that if you wanted to break it down, there's so six states and yes. one and FCT. He was spending 11.8 million naira per state. I mean, come state. on. I would love to see the tender process because let's see how much the other contractors yeah. tendered in terms of how to execute the project and see who was the better person mm -hmm. or the best person for the job. Yeah. On the website of the NPP, New Planet Project, they say that one of the advantages is the fact that they are cost effective. Mm. Okay. So they provide cost effective solutions. Wow. So I want to justify that wow. cost effective cost solution. Effective. So you should grab him more. Because because exactly. We were saying that your shepherd found out that eight million. Okay. We're talking about arm robbers and robbing who would you also go and establish a consultancy No, I don't. No, no. I am... <laughs> I am only here with to all do your my job. With, with all your connections. No, 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 no. With all your connections. But well, we, we do things right. We don't make mistakes. National <laughs> consultancy <laughs> services. Okay, you guys have too much fun here. Well, let's talk. You talked about Robin Hood. Let's, let's head over to Ecuador now, where a group of armed men broke into a live television studio on Tuesday and threatened staff of the network. The gunmen who were wearing hoods and carrying guns interrupted a live broadcast. The incident occurred in the wake of a 60-day state of emergency, which had begun on Monday after a convicted gang leader vanished from his prison cell. As hilarious as this is, it's quite unfortunate. I mean, we, 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 we have it hard here in Nigeria. But I mean, look at Ecuador. Ecuador is one of those countries where, you know, they, we have these uh, gang dealings, armed robbery. I mean, he's I... He's uh, things from cell. But he's, I mean, he's, 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 um, I don't know escaping. how an armed robber can vanish from prison. But I thought this was a story that was, uh, you know, uh, out there. And I yeah, wanted to highlight it. I mean, no, please, armed robbers, don't come to our eyes. I beg you. Well, all right, shall we end what? trending today by highlighting this video of CNN News anchor Sarah Sidna, who shared the news about her stage three breast cancer diagnosis with a poignant and emotional reflection about life. Let's take a look. Just take a second to recall the names of eight women who you love and know in your life. Just eight. Count them on your fingers. Statistically, one of them will get or have breast cancer. I am that one in eight in my friend group. I have never been sick a day of my life. I don't smoke, I rarely drink. Breast cancer does not run in my family. And yet here I am with stage three breast cancer. It is hard to say out loud. I am in my second month of chemo treatments and will do radiation and a double mastectomy. Stage three is not a death sentence anymore for the vast majority of women. But here is the reality that really shocked my system when I started to research more about breast cancer, something I never knew before this diagnosis. If you happen to be a black woman, you are 41% more likely to die from breast cancer than your white counterparts, 41%. So to all my sisters, black and white and brown out there, please, for the love of God, get your mammograms every single year. Do your self-exams. Try to catch it before I did. Now, here's something I could never, ever have predicted would happen to me. I have thanked cancer for choosing me. I'm learning that no matter what hell we go through in life, that I am still madly in love with this life. We at Arise News are sending her positive healing energy. I thought this was such an important story to let our women know, because she said 41%. We are all African here in Nigeria. We're black. Go check your mammogram. Start at the age of 35. Well, we thank God that, you know, she said that it's not a death sentence. We do know that, you know, life uh, happens to everyone. So take care, everyone. All the women out there, go get your mammogram checked. I'd like to thank you all for a great analysis, as always, on What's Trending. Well, that's all I have for you on What's Trending today. I'll see you all tomorrow.